All right, today I'm gonna go over a VGT issue on a uh, the trouble code. You may have more than one different codes, but the main one that we're looking at is a P0046 code. Um, the tool that I'm using to diagnose is IDS, but I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step process to diagnose the issue. And then you can basically just follow the steps and um, hopefully be able to fix your issue with these uh, this instruction here so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a preliminary preliminary diagnosis for the DTC P0046 and we're gonna do a visual inspection so the first thing you want to do is check your um, check the turbo for boost leaks um, intercooler and um, exhaust manifold leaks so if you have an exhaust leak or a plugged up exhaust even um, I've seen cats pretty much plug up an exhaust system and cause this issue too um, I've never seen a map sensor really fail unless you break them so I'm not gonna rule I'm not gonna rule it out but it is a possibility um, and another thing I'm gonna look at is um, the VGT uh, working and stuff like that. So this truck is a 2005. It has a brand new power max turbo in there So I know the turbo is working fine so uh, Let's go ahead and start with our visual inspection. I'll show you what to look at So first thing you want to look at is this wire that goes up to the turbo Now you can see in this one. It's got a little bit of a fray on it But I'm gonna ignore that for now because I know that the wire is still connected. It's not grounding out on anything um, this pigtail will get replaced, but it's not going to cause a fault um, anywhere. So, I'm going to ignore that for right now. Um, the boost tubes are good. Um, when you start this truck up, if you take the... Uh, what you can do is you can take the air filter out right here. I loosen this up, pull the whole air filter out, start the truck, and at idle, you can put your hand over this it's gonna have some pretty good suction so hopefully you got some strong hands but um, or you can use a piece of wood and you can watch the this get sucked in so it, it'll start collapsing um, usually when it does that um, so there's two different ways to do a, a leak down and this is probably the easiest one another way is to put a, an adapter on the turbo here put air to it and then air up pressurize your your um, your intake side vacuum test is just as good so when you put your hand here you're gonna create a vacuum what that'll do is it'll start collapsing this boot and you'll start hearing from any of the of the cat pipes or the intercooler you'll, you'll hear the air trying to pull into the intercooler and create a vacuum and most of the time if you put your hand over this and this thing doesn't collapse then obviously you got a leak somewhere in your intercooler system or your cack pipes. So we already did that. So I know that the cack pipes are good. Then there's no leak anywhere. So we're going to keep looking at the turbo. Exhaust side is good. Um, down pipe, it's a straight pipe. There's no cat in there. So that's all good. So let's, uh, let's continue looking at the computer. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to here, self test, and we're gonna check for codes. Just to show you that the codes are present and what codes this truck's given me. So, got Four six code that I was telling you about. Um, that's because I disconnected the map sensor. Um, actually, I'll tell you why that happens here in a second. Um, I took the, I unplugged that turbocharger, um, circuit performance out of range, and exhaust pressure sensor is low. A lot of times when you get this code, um, it doesn't shoot this other code up here um, it'll just act funny your truck will like hesitate or 
um, act like it's got a sticky turbo, but it's not. Usually exhaust back pressure sensor causes um, surging and turbo lag and all sorts of stuff. So um, another thing is, if you're using a SCT X4, do not look at the um, the boost reading on it. For some reason, only goes up to like 28 pounds. So if you were to pressurize your map sensor, and you'll see it only go to like 28 or 29 pounds. It doesn't go over that for some reason. And another thing is the exhaust back pressure sensor reads differently too. So on the um, on the SCT X4, it'll show like 50, 50 or 60 pounds at idle, and IDS will only show like 20 pounds at idle. So uh, those are the two PIDs I don't really trust on that thing. Um, the SCT X4 is a great tool. Um, it's a shame that they couldn't put uh, Fickham Sync and uh, Fan Clutch in that one. So if they could put fan the um, Fan Clutch Speed um, and Fickham Sync, it'd be a great tuner. But um, right now it's just mediocre for me, and it works. So. Um, now we're going to go ahead and carry out this air management test and this is how you'll get those other codes. So we'll do a boost test. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at your barometric pressure sensor, look at your map sensor, and look at your exhaust back pressure sensor and you want to be within um, two pounds. Uh, but usually you want to be pretty close. So everything will pass. So we'll go ahead and start the engine and Like I said, it's straight pipe So it's gonna go ahead and, and carry out a test here So what it's doing is it's, it's commanding the VGT to go from 0 to 80 Exhaust back pressure sensor and your boost should basically make a pyramid like that one did, and it does. Something. So that didn't work. So there should be a dome on this one, and there should be a dome on this one. The test is complete. There's my. Readings there. It doesn't have EGR, so we're not going to worry about that one. Um, let's see here. We're not going to worry about this test. Just skip this and move on to the next thing. Alrighty. So now we're going to move on to the next thing. Alright, so I know I got the P0046 code. Possible causes. One, um, control circuit open. Two, control, control circuit short to um, voltage. Uh, three, short to ground. Four, your actual VGT actuator not working correctly. Or five, your PCM. So, with the um, key off, disconnect the VGT actuator, turn the key on, engine off, and we're going to measure the voltage between pin one and pin two on the VGT actuator. Alright, so... Take your multimeter, plug into that, look at your voltage. You gotta have over 10.5. So we have almost 12 volts, so we know we're good on that. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the VGT percentage on the computer. And right now it's at zero. Key on. I wanna take control of this. Okay. So we're going to go, boom, boom. Okay, so I can go all the way up to 80. Okay. 
See that? So we're gonna start at zero. Okay. And we're gonna look at the voltage. Right there. So we'll go up. It doesn't move. So voltage does not drop. Another way you can do this is with a test light. So we'll see what it looks like with a test lamp. So the next thing you do is you can take a test lamp. Um, the LED ones don't work as good as the halogen ones. So make sure you have a halogen bulb inside of these things. Um, and what you'll do is you'll... Um, so on my probes, they're like really nice and skinny so I can get into those connectors. So you plug this into the, um, into the harness on... Uh, for the VGT and then I'll ground out on this one and then on the other side I'll just have this touching the other probe right here and then <clears throat> what you'll do is you all on the computer you'll command from 0 up to 80 percent and see if this light gets brighter or dimmer and it should get brighter and then as you go down to from 80 down to zero, it should be very dim or nothing at all. Uh, with this truck, um, that didn't work either. So uh, usually what happens is if you have a electrical problem going from the turbo to the PCM, um, that is going to be the issue or the PCM itself is the problem. A lot of times what happens is when you have these little wires here that touch the turbocharger, you'll short the PCM out, and it will basically say, "Okay, fine, the truck will run, but I'm not going to give you any command on the on the BGT anymore. It just shuts the BGT side of the PCM off." <clears throat> so, uh, in that case, what I will do now is pop a different computer into the truck, and we'll go ahead and start over with the test from the beginning. So that way we can see, like I said. Brand new turbocharger, no air leaks, no, no nothing. So this truck is running fine, <clears throat> and all of a sudden it just has no boost no more. So we'll go ahead and <clears throat> put a new uh, computer in it. Already got that one loose, and then we'll go ahead and start the test again. All right. Okay, so new computer's in, and we'll go ahead and go to the turbo test and then you can see what it's supposed to look like we have a turbo working and I'm pretty sure this computer is gonna take care of this issue here turn the key on all right take that in so it's gonna look at your barometric pressure manifold pressure and your EVP this time, so the computer that's in here is for an 0304 truck, so it doesn't really care. So I don't care about that right now. It just means I have to flash the computer, but at least we can see if the turbo works. So we'll go ahead and start the truck. Right off the bat, you can hear a difference. So since it's only going off of the MGP sensor there, it's not going to be that big of a hump. But the um, if the EBP was on there as well, um, then you'll see uh, the turbo, the MGP, and then you'll see the EBP at, or EP sensor at the bottom, exhaust back pressure, and that will have a arch as well. So you want all, th all three to pretty much mirror what the turbo is doing. So um, since it's a Power Max. It's going to be a little different um, but 
the uh, the test there failed or passed. So now I know that it's a computer issue and not a VGT or turbo issue. So um, with that being said, um, I'll go ahead and put the old computer back in, pull the tunes out of it, flash it back to stock, and then put the new computer in and go ahead and flash it and get everything good to go. And then uh, this truck is done. So there you go. If you have any questions, um, a couple other things. If you have, um, if you want to know some other stuff, um, such as how to check the uh, VGT control circuit for short to ground, um, key off, measure the resistance between the VGT uh, actuator on pin number two, um, harness side, and ground. Um, you should have a resistance of greater than 10,000 ohms. And then, um, and if that does, uh, if you, if you have a, gr a greater resistance on 10,000 ohms, go ahead and go to, um, I'll just con keep continuing on here. Um, measure the resistance between VGT, uh, actuator pin two, harness side at the PCM engine connector pin number 10 on the harness side um, you should have a resistance less than 5 ohms and then if that is the case install a new PCM and that was probably the case on this one I just didn't measure it so um, it's faster for me to just yank the, the computer out and put a different computer in and see if it works so um, but if you are people that don't have just spare parts laying around it's kind of hard for you to do that so if you want a for sure thing um, and you know that, hey, I'm going to have to probably buy a computer and fork out whatever it is for a computer. If you go to the dealer, they're, I think they're around 800 bucks. Um, but you can find them online everywhere else. Um, so if the resistance is less than five, uh, 5 ohms, you need a new computer. Um, if it's not, then you have an open circuit somewhere. So you need to um, fix your wiring. And then... Um, there's another thing you can do um, is you can remove the uh, actuator from the VGT and then um, you can do what's called a they call it a VG uh, clean the VGT actuator valve and retest so um, the VGT actuator valve is sensitive to uh, to cam uh, contamination so be very careful when you're uh, cleaning it um, and then um, let's see here. I'll give you this instructions on how to do this. So, um, they want you to use, uh, by the book, the carburetor tune-up cleaner PM2 to spray the actuator valve. Uh, brake cleaner or other solvents may damage the actuator valve. Um, I use 3M, so whatever. Um, remove the VGT. Um, do not spray the zinc-coated large diameter housing or electrical connector. Uh, spray the valve with carburetor tune-up cleaner uh, PM2 while pressing the cam follower, which is the tip of the actuator. Uh, install the VGT actuator and connect the VGT connector. Turn the key on and engine running. Access the output state control, which is the part in the PIDs, the data log. So they want you to access that. Um, so you're going to look at VGT PID and the RPM PID. So um, they want you to increase your RPM to 1200 RPM using that output state control. And then um, depending on the calibration of the truck, it may limit you from 1150 to 1200. So as long as you get the, it just go up as high as you can. And then increase your VGT duty cycle to greater than 70% and then decrease it to zero and see what your actual, you know, you'll be able to hear the VGT if it's working correctly. Uh, so as long as the pitch changes, then you know your actuator is working. So, um, but anyways, I hope this video helps you guys out. If you have any questions, um, feel free to, uh, comment and, or send me an email and please like and subscribe. Um, it's kind of hard shooting videos with the amount of workload that I got going on. Stuff like this just one off. It's, uh, it's kind of when I got the time to do it uh, right now it's you know I'm, I got 10 trucks here so 
I try to get as much work done as I can uh, without holding the customers up and at the same time stuff stuff that's interesting like this I try to get uh, try to get a video on it just to help you guys out that are having issues with either over boosting or the VGT not working correctly or the turbocharger not working correctly so um, I'm just trying to help you guys and um, go from there but uh, anyways if you have any questions please feel free to comment and I will do the best I can to give you answers all right thank you